Hey guys, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. Today I want to show you everything you need to know about Shopify Flow and how you can start creating your own custom workflows and automations that will hopefully save you a bunch of time. Of course, we will also cover all the latest updates from Shopify editions, so it should be a lot of fun and let's take a look. Okay, so Shopify Flow is a low-code automation platform that allows us to automate workflows or automate processes directly in the Shopify admin. The way this works is that we are provided with a graphical interface where we can connect different types of building blocks in order to create our own custom logic without writing code. These building blocks can be divided into three different categories, which are namely a trigger, which is the event that starts a workflow. So this can be something that happens in your store or in an app. For example, we can start a workflow every time an order is created. Next, we have condition blocks, which determine if or which action should be taken based on the condition that we define. So for example, we could say only proceed if the order amount is above a certain value. And then lastly, we have action blocks, which literally define the action we want to take or the change that we want to make in our store or in a third party app. So for example, this could be changing the fulfillment status or adding a specific tag to the order or sending a notification on Slack. So in summary, every flow has one trigger, which starts the flow, and then we can define multiple conditions and actions depending on what it is that we want to accomplish. Okay, so now that we have a general understanding of what Shopify flow is, you might also be wondering what kind of tasks or processes can be automated to begin with. And I think one of the best ways to get a feeling for what's possible is to browse some of the pre-built templates that you can find right in the app, but to also name a few of the most common categories, inventory management is a big one. So for example, you can automatically tag certain products if the stock is low or send a notification to your team. Then order management and fulfillment is another category. You can prioritize certain orders or get a notification if a specific product is included. Preventing fraud is another big topic. So you can put orders on hold that are above a certain amount or maybe notify the team if one customer made multiple orders that day. But flows are also not limited to just internal processes and can also include customer facing actions. So for example, you could send an automated thank you email upon receiving a positive review. So in theory, you can automate things pretty much across all areas of a store. All right, so now that we know what Shopify flow is and what it can be used for, let's also see how we can build a new workflow end to end. And for the sake of this demonstration, I want to build a small fraud prevention flow that triggers every time a new order is created and then checks whether the order amount is above 5,000. And if it's indeed greater than 5,000, then I want to receive a new notification on Slack in a dedicated channel, also including a direct link to that order for faster review, the order date, as well as some information on previous orders from that customer like how many were refunded entirely, how many were refunded partially, and how many were just paid so that our team can make better decisions quickly. I also feel this is a very relatable example because we use a ton of Slack automations in our own business and they really help us to stay organized because we can add team members to this channel here, we can check things off, tag each other if we have a question, so it makes things really efficient. So this is not something theoretical, this is something where you can actually provide a ton of value to your client's business if you can help them set up a few smart workflows. Okay, so then diving right in, the first thing we have to do is install the Shopify Flow app, officially built and maintained by Shopify, and it's also free of charge. I will add a link in the description, and yeah, you can just go ahead and install the app. I already have it on my demo store, so I can bring up the app dashboard right here. And then once the app is loaded, this is what the dashboard looks like, a couple of news and resources to get started, some feature templates we can use, and on top, you find a list of all your workflows. As you can tell, I already have one test workflow in here, which I created in preparation for this video. Now, in order to create a new workflow, we can either browse the templates or just click on create workflow in the upper right corner. And here we have to start by selecting a trigger that will later start our workflow. In the search bar, I would now search for order. And here it already suggests the order created event. This workflow starts when a new order is created. Perfect, let's select that. And then before adding any additional steps to our workflow, I would first give it a meaningful title to stay organized in my dashboard. And I would just make this very descriptive. So I think high value order review Slack notification would be pretty accurate here. Okay, now that our trigger is implemented, indicated by this blue play button here, start when order created, we can chain some additional action or condition blocks 
to the trigger. So we can click on this small plus icon next to then and then add a condition. Check if and in this context menu here we can add the criteria we want to check for. We can also add multiple criteria if we want. So let's go ahead and click that. Here we have to select the property we want to check for. And since we use the order creation trigger, Shopify already suggests the order object from the Shopify API. One thing you will notice is that the API exposes a lot of different data fields. So if you already have some experience working with the GraphQL API, for example, it does make things a bit easier. But otherwise, you also find a small explanation under each field, which is usually very helpful. And the property we are looking for is called current total price set, the total price of the order. Let's select that. Here we can also decide if we want to have the amount in the checkout currency or shop currency. If you have, let's say, a multi-currency setup and different thresholds for each currency. But let's just assume there's only one, so shop money and then the amount, money amount as a decimal. Okay, here we want to check if the amount is greater than or equal to, and then we set 5,000 as our threshold. Okay, so far so good. This is our condition block. Now we can decide what should happen if the amount is greater than 5,000, and also what happens otherwise. If it's less than 5,000, we don't want to do anything, so I will leave that empty. But if it's greater than 5,000, then I want to add a new action. More specifically, we want to send a notification on Slack, which might not show up in your suggested list here because per default there is a filter installed apps so you might need to clear that and then search for any third party app you like slack in our case and if you click here for the first time you might also have to authenticate with your slack account because flow needs a direct connection to slack in order to be able to send messages so let's go ahead and select this action send a slack message and here we can configure the channel and the message that we want to send so prior to this, make sure to create your new Slack channel. And then also very important in the members tab, make sure that you've added the flow bot, Shopify flow as an integration so that it has access to this channel here. And to save you a bit of time, I've prepared the message skeleton. So let me just paste this right here and explain it. So it starts with this emoji, heavy dollar sign, then the headline, new high value order, the direct link to my demo stores orders, here we still have to find a way to replace this ID dynamically depending on the order that was just created. Next we have the date and then lastly the data points about previous orders from that customer also with emojis in front, the green circle, yellow circle and red circle. Okay then let's first replace the date because that might be the easiest. So I'm going to add a variable here and then from the order object I just want to select the created at timestamp. Okay, so this should be rendered here. Next, we can replace this hard-coded order ID and make it dynamic. So I'm also going to add a variable here. From the incoming order, I'm going to select the order ID right here, a globally unique ID. Let's select that first. Now, one problem we will face with this implementation is that the order ID is returned in the following format. So we have this global ID string here and then the actual ID we're interested in at the very end. So we have to find a way to extract that. And my idea here would be to use a liquid split filter and then split the entire expression after this first half. And that would create an array of two elements, the first one empty, and then the second element would be the ID we are interested in. And then we can just grab the last element from this array here. So in practice, that would look as follows. We would grab the order ID, split by this term right here, and then grab the last array element, which would only return this number here. Yeah, so this is just normal Shopify liquid, which we have access to in this editor, which is awesome. So let me just go ahead and copy and paste this. Replace the order ID with our full expression. And now it's breaking into a new line, but the filter is still here. Split and then last. Okay, so far so good. I think this is ready for a quick test. We haven't implemented this last part here yet which I'm going to show you in one second. But let's turn this flow on, see if everything is working and where we're currently at. So ready to turn on your automation? Yes, let's turn it on. Okay, so then on the front end, let me add 10 snowboards to reach the order threshold or the threshold for our flow. Go to checkout and then complete the order with a bunch of test data and a test payment gateway. So pay now. Okay, order confirmed. 
And on Slack, within seconds, we get this new notification here, also containing a link to that order. Let's see if that works. Perfect, that makes it very convenient for the team. The timestamp also seems to work, perfect. And now we just have to work on making this last part here dynamic as well. Okay, so far so awesome. Now we can move on to the last part, which is also where the new updates from Shopify editions will come in. And as you just saw, Shopify flow is already quite flexible. We can combine different triggers, various conditions, actions, potentially even some liquid code, which allows yeah, to build a variety of different solutions. But we're also limited to the available data fields and some flows might require more complex logic. Now, this is exactly why Shopify introduced a new action block that lets you run custom JavaScript code right in your workflows. And that is awesome because then we can also implement more complex logic, iterate over data, count certain properties, or even work with more complex meta fields. So that opens up even more possibilities than before. Now, in order to use this new run code action in our project, I first want to insert a step between our condition and then sending the actual message. So I'm going to get rid of this connection here and then move our Slack message to the side for a moment. And then right after the condition, so I'm clicking this plus icon here again. I want to use a new action and then search for run code. Okay, so this block is right here. And this immediately brings up the code editor that we need to configure our run code action. And I will say this is a bit more advanced, so it definitely requires some coding experience. But let me break down what we see here. First, we have one field where we want to define the input for our code block in the form of a GraphQL query. So this is the data that we want to feed into our code block and that we want to do something with. Then we also have to define the outputs, the output variables that we want to make available in the following steps, in following actions and conditions. And lastly, we have the JavaScript implementation that makes the magic happen, that takes the input data we defined, does something with it, and then returns the output variables we're looking for. Okay, let's see how this looks in practice. First, let's think about the input data we need. Whenever a new order comes in, I want to find the corresponding customer. Then I want to grab all the historical orders. And I need to know the financial status of each so that I can count how many are paid, partially refunded, or refunded. In GraphQL, that translates to the following. So we're starting with the order at hand. Find the associated customer. Look up all historical orders as well as the financial status. Now, all these properties here are also documented in the GraphQL documentation. And as you type here, it also suggests available properties for these action code blocks. But if you never worked with GraphQL before, I also highly recommend installing and testing the Shopify GraphQL app, like Graphical GraphQL. Um, it's basically a graphical interface where you can practice writing queries and then execute them against the store you're working in. And you can also see the data that comes back so that you get a feeling for how the response might look like and how to work with this data. So for example, here you can see a list of all the orders as well as the financial status, paid, 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 refunded, partially refunded. And it really helps when writing your own logic. All right, now that we have our input data defined, let's move on and define the output values. And we don't need a message of type string, but instead I wanna have three integers the number of paid orders, the number of partially refunded orders, and the number of refunded orders. And now we just have to come up with a JavaScript implementation that takes the input data, counts the different types of orders, and then returns the output values we defined right here. Okay, then for the JavaScript implementation, let me copy and paste what I've prepared. So I will paste my code right here. And now let me explain everything step by step. So we're starting with the input data. And first, I want to extract the orders from the input data. So input.order.customer.orders. This gives me an array of all the different orders. Then we initialize three different counter variables, one for the fully paid orders, one for the partially refunded orders, and one for the entirely refunded orders. And then down here, we're just counting the different financial statuses by looping over all the orders. And then for each order, we just have a switch statement, which checks, is the order paid? Then increase the paid counter. Is the order partially refunded? Then increase the partially refunded counter. 
or is the order refunded, like fully re refunded, then increase the refund counter. Now, after all this is done, after we've checked the financial status for each order and counted everything respectively, we can go ahead and return our counter variables as the function output. So this is exactly what we defined right here. For example, the number of paid orders, which is equal to what we counted. Okay, now with our implementation in place, we can close this out and return to the graphical flow editor. And now we can connect our Slack message right after our code block. So let me drag and drop this here. So the output of our run code action now flows into our message action. And if we bring up the configuration for our Slack message, we can now go ahead and replace these hard-coded values with variables coming from our new code block. So we can see the run code action. And here we have all our new variables available. So the number of paid orders is right here. The number of partially refunded orders is right here. And the number of fully refunded orders should be right here. Okay, let's go ahead and save these changes or apply these changes. And the last thing we have to do now is test our implementation thoroughly. So back on the front end, I'm adding another 10 snowboards. My demo store is crushing it today. <laughs> and then go to cart and complete the payment with a bunch of test data. Order confirmed. And then on Slack, we can see the new notification coming in right here. And this time the data is fully dynamic. How cool is that? All right, guys, and I think with that, we can bring this video to an end. Today, we've been covering a lot. We started with what Shopify Flow actually is, then what it can be used for. We saw how it can be used as a low code platform with like predefined actions and conditions and also pre-populated data fields. But then we also learned how to use the new run code action to implement custom JavaScript code and make more complex business logic work. I really hope this was a helpful starting point. And as always, you will find the best resources in the description. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and then have an amazing rest of your day. I'm gonna catch you in the next one, bye.